Hey everybody, this is uh, Mr. Munson. We are continuing in Unit 1, Basic Geometry. We're at our last section here. It's uh, 1.8 polygons, interior and exterior angles. We're going to kind of study that. Let's take a look at this picture real quick. We see convex and concave. Um, what we find out is that uh, for convex uh, shapes, the, the, the sides always point out of the shape, right? But with a concave, they can kind of cave in on the shape. And so we'll explore that and some other things about polygons as we move along. Let's get going. Okay, down at the bottom, I have a, a larger view of that convex concave picture. And basically, we talked about this before. If I grab any two points in a con convex polygon and draw and connect them, that segment will appear inside um, the figure. That same thing can happen with a concave figure, but it doesn't happen and work for every single point. Sorry, let me put that right there. I'm going to put this point here, and it connects. And you can see this is exterior of the polygon, so that doesn't work. All right, now let's take a look at another piece. Okay, just to make this a little bit easier to see, I've enlarged it, but obviously it should be drawn into your uh, notes there. Equilateral polygon. An equilateral polygon is basically a shape, a polygon, where all the sides are the same. Next up, equiangular or equiangular, equiangular, however you want to say it, but get the word angular in there. And that's a polygon whose angles are all congruent. When you get both those concepts together, you get an equiangular polygon, or, or I'm sorry, a regular polygon, okay? All right, let's take a look at a couple of examples where we're going to need to calculate the sum of the interior angles. So this is the uh, formula for doing that. I have sum with a little i underneath it because we're going to have the sum of the exterior angles at some point, and I'll put a little e underneath there, okay? I want you to get used to writing this formula. Every time we're dealing with the sum of the interior angles, you want to write this, okay? It's a real quick formula. Basically, to find the sum of the interior angles, I just plug in the number of sides into the end, calculate. Now, so in any four-sided figure, I don't care what it looks like, any four-sided figure, the interior angles are equal to 360 degrees, okay? Let's see if you can do it for a 12-gon. Okay, I'm not going to draw the 12-sided shape. It's just too clumsy. See if you can do this. Put me on pause and do the calculations for yourself. Remember, write the formula first with no numbers in it. Now, I know that this might seem kind of bizarre, that the, uh, all the angles of a 12-sided figure, interior angles, added up equal 1,800 degrees. The more we practice this, you'll see just more sides means more angles, okay? So for a pentagon, a five-sided figure, it's 520 degrees. And so, uh, let's see, I think I might have calculated that wrong in my head. Yes, it's uh, actually 540 degrees. Again, the more we do of these, the better you'll get at them, and you'll just start remembering them. Okay, on this problem, they're asking you, I wonder what this angle is here. To do that, we're going to have to kind of draw in the idea of the um, uh, polygon interior angle sum theorem. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the left side, which is the sum of the interior angles, and I'm going to replace it with the angles that I know. And I get that. Now notice I have that Y unknown in there. That's what I'm looking for. But the problem is that I have this N over here. That's two unknowns in one equation. Of course, I do know the number of sides. So I'm going to take that N out and throw in the number of sides. And if I calculate that, right, there's five sides. So it's 5 minus 2 times 180. And so the sum of all the interior angles in this shape, no matter what the degrees are, what the angles and individual angles are, it's always going to equal 5. 40. I'm going to kind of simplify the left side and get it so that I can solve for that y. All right, so I just collected all the terms on the left side, made it 470, plus the missing angle of y, and it's all equal to 540. So the measure of that missing angle is 70 degrees. And so that's pretty much it. Hey, one of the most common things is that when we're adding these things up, a lot of times students will skip that angle, forget to put in 90 just because there's not a number there. Don't forget to do that. We have to account for every angle in our um, equation. All right, let's look at a triad problem and see if you can do it there. Uh, you know, and again, you get another opportunity to kind of see it in action if you're still struggling with this. But I would prefer you to go back and review this part of the video. If you didn't follow that, go back and look at it before we get into the deeper end. 
All right, give it a try. See if you can do this one on your own. Go ahead and put me on pause and come back and check your work. Okay, so I just went ahead and wrote the equation first. Then I wrote the summing addition of all the anterior angles and made it equal to that n minus 2 times 180. Now, I noticed this was a five-sided figure. It's no surprise to me that all the angles add up to 540 because we just did that over on the left-hand side. It doesn't matter. Every five-sided figure, 540. Just memorize that one if you can. So that any time from now until the end of June, um, whenever you see a five-sided figure, the sum of the interior angles are 540. You just know that. Very good. 103 degrees for X. You did your calculations right. Let's move on. Okay, let's take a look at this one. This is the same kind of problem we just looked at, but it's just not drawn for us. So we're looking at the sum of the interior angles of a hexagon. Certainly a hexagon has six sides. And then they're asking me to find the sum, so I'm going to write so if you look down at the very bottom, the sum of the six-sided figures equals 720. For those professional students, those students looking to be a little bit top-notch, you put the number down there to let you know, you know, visually what you're dealing with. So every six-sided figure, 720, if you want to memorize that, makes it easy in the next. Take a look at this one. Try to do this one on your own. And hopefully you got that one, right? Sum of an eight-sided figures, 1,080 degrees. Now, don't let that, you know, confuse you. I know sometimes students are like, how could that possibly be? And you'll understand that as we move through this section a little bit difficult, uh, a little bit more deep. Right now, I just want you to know the process. Okay, take a look at this triangle. It certainly has three interior angles. I've extended the sides out, um, creating three exterior angles. I want you to just take a few moments and just go ahead and calculate these three exterior angles. Remember, they're a linear pair. You've done this tons of times in class. So see if you can calculate those. All right, so there's my calculations. Hopefully they match yours. Quickly, uh, I wrote an equation of how I solve for that. Basically, um, each exterior angle is a linear pair to an interior angle, and I just subtracted. You set up the equation and subtracted it away from 180. All right, let's move to your try it problems. Okay, draw this figure into your notes and see if you can find the exterior angles. Come back and check your work. All right, very good. Now, um, your some of some students will have difficulty kind of uh, imagining what it is that you're doing. Okay, so just for those people, I'm looking at these two angles. They're supplementary, right? These two angles supplementary. They're a linear pair. The figure is just twisted, right? So it's the same concept as that we've dealt with before. There's just other information in the picture. Now, I want you to experience something that's really fabulous. One side, there's a three-sided figure. On the other side, it's four-sided. Four I've memorized the sum of the interior angle for both of these figures is different because there's different number sides. Now, what I want you to do is find the sum of the exterior angles, right? Just calculate it up. You know, add the left side exterior angles all together. Find out what the sum is. Same thing for the right side. Put me on pause. Come back and check your work. 360 degrees on both of them. It does not matter how many sides. What we find out is the sum of the exterior angles of every, every polygon is 360 degrees. So let's take a look at that. This is basically the exterior angle sum theorem. Okay, it basically says the sum of all the exterior angles of all polygons is equal to 360 degrees. So if I ask you, if I give you a shape and I say what's the exterior angles add up to, you don't need to calculate anything. You just remember it's always 360 degrees. So here's a shape and I could ask you, what is the sum of all the exterior angles? So I take one of the sides and extend it and I get one of the angles. But I know that's 360. Now what I'm more interested in doing is taking that idea and de determining what is the measure of each one of those angles. So let me explain how you're going to do that. Now in this particular figure of this coin, all the exterior angles, every time you extend a side, you get another exterior angle, right, and so on. This is called a regular shape. And that means that all these exterior angles as well are the same. So to find this, the, how much each one angle is, I'm going to do something that's quite easy. 
I'm going to use this formula. A single exterior angle of a regular polygon is simply found by taking 360 and dividing it by the number of sides, because the number of sides is the same as the number of exterior angles. Now this, fig now this figure is a dodecagon, my absolute favorite shape. And so I'm going to take 360 divided by 12, and each one of those exterior angles ends up being a 30 degree angle. Super easy. I love working on the outside of these figures. All right, see if you can do this one. Eight-sided figure. See if you can calculate what is the measure of each exterior angle. Like there's one there, okay? There's uh, eight of them there. Pretty easy. 360 divided by eight, I get 45 degrees. So that's a 45 degree angle as all the other exterior angles as well. So these, all these problems I'm giving you are all, you know, based on these concepts of the sum interior angles or the exterior angles or whatever. But they're worded in a different way or presented in a different way, so you have to be able to process that. So let's look at the one on the left and then the one on the right. I'm going to do the one with you on the left, and then you'll do the one on the right by yourself. So we're going to start with the single exterior angle theorem, or formula, right? 360 divided by the number of sides. Since it's an 11 gone, it has 11 sides. I'm just going to use S with a little E there. I might put a uh, little X next to it so I can keep my head wrapped around. I'm dealing with an exterior angle. Or not. I just realized what that looked like. And so we're going to do, here we go. The single exterior angle is equal to approximately, okay? So once I do this on my calculator, it turns out to be about 32. 0.7 degrees, okay? That's approximately. Notice that I have basically an equal sign with a wavy symbol to it, and that means approximate, okay? Let's see if you can do the try it problem over here. So every exterior angle is 20 degrees. Now, I don't want to draw a 18-sided figure, but just imagine that if this was one of, you know, part of it. If I extend any one side, According to this, that's going to be a 20 degree angle, right? And I extend this one, 20 degree angle, right? And remember, it doesn't matter. If I extend the opposing side here, I'm still going to get a 20 degree angle because of those vertical angles, okay? So at any one vertex, there's an exterior angle, and then it, there's a partner that's exactly like it just because it's a vertical angle. Okay, I hope that makes sense. There's the black line. Take a few moments and write a summary. Your, your uh, detail, the amount of summary, uh, detail that you put into your summary will dictate how long and how deep of an understanding you have of this lesson. If you put something in there, like I learned stuff about exterior angles and interior angles, it's that shallow. So it's up to you, okay? You're writing your summary. This is for you, not me, okay? So I encourage you, if you're looking to be that student, I want you to do your absolute best, write your best summary. Okay, here we go to the next line, the next page. Of course, put me on pause to do your summary and then go to the next page. And before we jump over there to the try it pro or the do it problems, I want to give you an opportunity for a bonus, uh, some more points, uh, just kind of shore some things up if you made some mistakes up to this point. This bonus needs to be done on a separate piece of paper, turned in three ring binder paper type of thing, a whole sheet, okay? I don't need a little half sheet type of thing. Um, make sure your name and date and all that stuff's on it, titles on it, bonus from eight. 1.8 video. This is an exterior angle challenge, okay? So make sure you put all the original information in there. You must explain with your work. You know, you're going to show some calculations possibly and sentences to get credit. So you're going to explain with words what you did, okay? Um, to do this, you have two, um, you have an A and a B section. So in the A section, I want you to tell me how many sides does this figure have? So I've only given you a part of this figure. Now, it's not at all drawn scale, so don't try to connect the red lines around and decide from that, okay? Look at the information given and see if you can figure out through what we've learned, maybe even working backwards, we got an exterior angle of a regular polygon given as four degrees. How many sides does this thing have? And then B, what's the interior angle for each one of these um, angles of this, however, this regular poly however many sides this po polygon is? All right, now let's look at our triad problems. And so here's your try-it problems. I'm going to zoom in and make it a little bit larger so you can see it on any device. Again, uh, this is going on a separate piece of paper, and you're doing the, you put the title up there, 1.8 polygons, your name and all that stuff. And let's scroll through this.
And there you have it. All right, we'll see you next class.